So this is our uh, our launch point on the Tesla. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go ahead and do a launch for you guys, just so you can experience uh, what a Tesla Model Y can do. So launching is pretty simple. There you go. That's 60, 70, 80. And I'm going to go ahead and back off. So you have all the power in the world with this vehicle. You know, it may only be 3.5 to 60, which these days, if it's not under three seconds, it's considered like not supercar, but trust me, you got all the power in the world to pass anybody you need. If you're a decent driver and you know how to exploit the car, you can smoke 99% of things on the road, okay? You're not gonna have any problem roll racing or any problem doing that. And the fact of the matter is this is a crossover SUV that does zero to 60 in the threes. I mean, what a world, right? How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Driven Nashville. My name is Adam. Sincerely appreciate you stopping by the channel. If you're new to the channel, we produce weekly enthusiast-driven car and truck content. And today we're talking about a vehicle that I have personally really enjoyed. I reviewed this vehicle back in 2020 from the point of view of having a Tesla Model X P100D. And that video actually did pretty well. It got 70,000 views, mostly because I was controversial about the Model Y. I just thought that it had some inconsistencies with the panel gaps, uh, the, the look of the vehicle, the interior quality, etc. for the price point. Well, this is a brand new one. We just got this one rolled through our dealership here, direct auto of Tennessee. I broker for these guys. And this one's actually really good. And uh, I wanted to have another take on it, so to speak. Now, if you're new to Tesla, and let's be honest, a couple of years ago, you still were kind of an early adopter. Today, not so much. They've produced 385,000 Model 3s and Model Ys just in the last 90 days, according to their earnings release. And they've made over 2.6 million kind of standard vehicles, right? As in not high-end Model X, Model X. So you're talking uh, about 2.6 million Ys and 2.6 million in total Model 3s on the road today, which is quite a bit. Now, I want you to take a, a note on a couple of things here, and there's a lot I want to say, so you know, bear with me on the video here. But notice the panel gaps, guys. The difference between this particular Model Y and the last one I reviewed, I wouldn't call it night and day, but I would say they've significantly improved on the panel gaps. And I will also tell you on the interior build quality, there is virtually no rattling in this vehicle. This particular one has 4,000 miles and there is no interior rattling. Whereas my Model S and Model X both rattle like crazy. So I can tell you they've improved that on this. So the panel gaps are better and the interior quality seems to be better. Now they haven't changed the look much at all uh, since they've came out with them on the interior quality. We're gonna get into that in a second. Now, if you're not familiar with the Model Y, let me just tell you, this is the performance version. So the difference is there is you have these 21 wheels, you have the red brake calipers, they're quote performance brakes. You also have it lowered a little bit more compared to the standard version, gives it a slightly more sporty look. You also have on the back here, the carbon fiber right here, as you can see. And then here you have your badge that has that little line denoting performance underneath it. This does 60 miles an hour, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. And it does feel like a spaceship. I will tell you, we're gonna take this thing on a point of view drive today. The, the, when you get into a Tesla, and, and I have reviewed a lot of EVs, guys. Go on my EV playlist, I'll put a link to it right here. I mean, I reviewed the Kia EV6, the Mach-E, the Taycan Turbo S, the Lightning, the Rivian, the R1S, I mean, you name it, right? Uh, the R1T, excuse me, I haven't reviewed the R1S. Um, I will tell you that this still feels like the best electric car on the market today. Uh, when you get in it, when you feel the way the steering feels, it just drives like a sports car. You know, it's still faster than most high-end Ferraris of the world. You know, it's still got that je ne sais quoi and that X factor when you drive it. Similar to my Model S that I got in 16 and the Model X I got in 19. It still has that fun factor and that like, holy crap, this thing's a spaceship fun factor that really the Kia EV6 just never had. And frankly, a lot of the other ones I've reviewed, the only ones that still had that fun, oh my God, this is fast factor that this one has is the Taycan Turbo S and the Rivian. The Rivian was insane, right? Zero to 60 in three seconds for a massive truck like that. It was ridiculous. All the other ones, they just kind of felt like electric versions of their normal cars. Just being honest with you. Now, 
If you get the Model Y, you still get a zero to 60 time in the mid fours, which is plenty fast. And the price difference between a Model Y and a Model Y Performance is only five grand. So you're talking like 64.9 or 69.9. And guys, that's a lot of money. And this one also has full self-driving. So that's an additional $15,000 today from Tesla. They have been increasing it from 5,000 to 8,500 to 10 to 15,000. And, and it's still the biggest scam in the automotive industry. I said it, I've got two Teslas. One of them has FSD. I will tell you on the highway, on most of the roads of the world, it works amazing, but it is not full self-driving. They are probably gonna get sued at some point. And I will be honest with you guys, like the end of the day, the vehicle doesn't self-drive. Now this one does have that $15,000 option. So you're talking about a vehicle that is $87,000 from Tesla today. This exact vehicle, I'll put the little window sticker right here uh, for you guys or the little thing from their website so you can see what I'm talking about. That's a $1,400 a month car payment, guys if you don't put any money down. And that's, by the way, at a 5.34% interest rate, which good luck trying to get a 5.34% interest rate on a used vehicle, which this one is used, right? This is, this actually was just sold. Uh, so this one is a second owner now, or about to be a second owner. Now, that's a lot of money, guys. $84,000, especially in the used market, you can get a hell of a lot of amazing vehicles, especially when we're talking about internal combustion engine cars. So you really gotta fall in love with it. now. I personally like the, the Y's look, especially in this spec, the white with the black wheels with the red. I mean, this is, in my personal opinion, the spec to get. Even though this pearl white color is a standard color, it just looks so good. They do make a really, really nice white metallic flake in it, as you can see here. It's just a good looking paint. And overall, it just makes this car really pop and look good, especially with the tinted windows, which this one has. Now, do I like the way the, the Model Y looks in general, especially with the headlights and just some of the weird styling? No, I'm not usually a huge fan. I'm not a fan of the way this front looks. I always thought the Model X looks a lot better. However, from the rear, I actually think the Model Y looks a smidge better than the Model X. So from that point of view, I do think this is a good looking car. Like this profile right here looks pretty awesome. However, from the front, not so much. So I wanted to talk to you about a few other things and uh, let's go ahead and jump into the interior. Now, before we do, I gotta point out this right here. These are like Aston Martin door handles. So if you walk up to this, unlike the Model S, which does have these pop out, you, are, you really aren't gonna know how to get in the vehicle. A lot of people do this. And they're like, well, why is it not opening? Especially, you know, so you have to push and then it pops and then you pull it. So this is no different than Aston Martin, by the way. So you have to push and then pull. It's uh, a little finicky. I'm not a huge fan of it. I wish they would get rid of it because I will tell you, if you've got a whole bunch of groceries going on in your vehicle or you got, you know, you got a bunch of stuff here and you're trying to like do this, right? It just is a little trickier than you think, okay? Now, the spec on this one does have the white interior, right? So this is the white, this is an upgrade. Now with the performance, you cannot get the seventh row. So this only has seating for five adults. They have not changed up the interior much at all. You still have this really awful looking steering wheel. Um, I gotta say the steering wheel feels really good. Like when you're driving it, it's, it's thick and, it, and it's responsive and it's a good size and it feels nice, right? I do like the way the touch controls, but it looks like a video game steering wheel and I'm still just not a fan of that. For an $80,000 vehicle, especially the performance version, this should have some carbon fiber. You know, this, this should have just some overall stitch lines. It should have a center line. Like there's so many things they could have done to help it do, you know, dictate the performance version from the regular version. And I just think that's a miss. And the same thing here, you know, when you look at the doors, like there's nothing particularly wrong with all, with all this guys, you know, this is still nice leather here. It's got a stitch line right here. But if you look at a Kia EV6, or you look at the Porsche Taycan, or you look at any vehicles that are kind of comparable, even the Mach-E, like they've, they've done just a little bit of a better and more kind of a nicer interior. Like it's a little more modern and cool, whereas this still just comes across as very spark on the inside of the vehicle guys notice there is still no center screen here which is challenging because you have to do everything from the screen here 
And that sounds fine, and yes, you can get used to it, but in the end of the day, I promise you, if you're doing 60 miles an hour down the road and you're trying to like adjust something, for example, like your AC, which you, you have to essentially click that, then you have to then, like let's say you wanna turn off your heated steering wheel, you have to click once, then you have to click twice. Now let's say you, you wanna go ahead and adjust your fan speed, okay? Now I'm driving, mind you. You have to tap on that. There is no other way of doing it that can get really old and frankly a little dangerous. And let's say you wanna turn off your HVAC, oh, but you forgot to turn on off your steering wheel. Oh, you gotta do that and then you gotta do that, right? So when you really interact with the system, it, it, you get used to it, but in the end of the day, it's a little finicky. Um, I will tell you that you know all of this is great, the responsiveness, the way it looks, there's no issues there. It's just everything being a button, a little bit challenging. Now, the other thing I'll tell you is one of the things you're going to get used to because of that is the, the voice feature. Hey, Tesla, go ahead and turn on the heated steering wheel. Turn on the heated steering wheel. Boom. Now you can see the, the heated steering wheel is on. So I tend to find that works a little bit better for me. So when I'm navigating or I'm doing anything as far as like adjusting HVAC or whatnot, that is um, one of the things that you're gonna love. And it works really well in this car. Now you'll also notice there isn't a turn stock here to initiate autopilot. So autopilot, and we're gonna show this on the point of view drive, is it, it requires two clicks down here, okay? And there, you have to be pretty aggressive with the clicks. And the other thing that's still a little bit annoying, and I know some of these guys called me out on this in my last Model Y review, but you still have to use this ridiculous uh, like pin card to start the vehicle. So what you have to do, there's no key that comes with these vehicles. You can order the key, and I definitely would, so I can just leave it in the pocket. But you have to go ahead and put this here, and then that allows you to go ahead and put the car in drive, or park, or reverse, or whatever. I still think that's a little gimmicky. I put it in my wallet the other day and I will tell you it did not sense it and that kind of frustrated me. I had to take it out of my wallet. Um, it, you can get in the car by putting it right here on the, like right here guys. You can put it right here and this will, this will get you in the vehicle. Uh, so that right there is another little cork of the Model Y. Now, also on the interior that they did change, and or at least that they changed from the Model S and X, is this is a phone charger right here, and it works fairly well. But again, notice, this is the performance version. There's no carbon fiber here, guys. Like, why? You know, this is, this is supposed to be their top spec Model Y. You still have up here, all of this kind of just standard trim. There's no Alcantara, right? For this price point, you'd think they'd be able to put it in. You still get the incredible moonroof. That is nice. You know, you still get very, very Spartan interior as far as the rest of it goes. Here's your camera as well. So if you do have an accident, they record everything you do. The car is also sensing, by the way, if you didn't know, every time you're an autopilot, it's watching you. And if you look down at your phone or whatnot, it is going to let you know, hey buddy, you need to pay attention. You need to jerk on the steering wheel. And the last note I'll tell you about the performance is they give you these aluminum paddles. But again, there's just so many things that I think Tesla could have added to the car to just spice it up a little bit for the extra five grand you're paying. And ultimately it's an $80,000 vehicle. Like I just think other manufacturers are really starting to eat their lunch uh, when it comes to the, the quality for the money that they're able to put out. All right, now let's look here in the back. You do get plenty of space back here. Well, I wouldn't say plenty of space, but you do get enough space back here to have an adult comfortably. My seat's pretty far back. You also have the ability to go ahead and fold these seats down, and this does completely fold. Um, so that is nice. You do get a very, very practical crossover. And then if you want to, but, but notice guys, there's no frills back here. It's exactly like the front. I mean, yeah, this is leather, but at the end of the day, or fake leather, vegan leather, you know, suede, whatever you want to call it. This is power lifted hip up here, goes nice and high. Again, you do get a very large size trunk back here as well, which is nice. You do get some just general buttons here. They go ahead and adjust your seat down, which is cool. And you get additional storage here as, as well. So plenty of storage. This is still a very practical vehicle. From that point of view, you're gonna love it. Yeah, you do have to get over these kind of finicky doors. I mean, 
I, I've been using them now for a week. I gotta be honest, I'm really not a fan. I just wish they would put normal doors, even if that gave me a little bit of a coefficient of drag worse than it is currently. So that's what I wanted to say about this. Let's take this thing for a point of view drive. I'll give you some additional color because really where this car shines, it's not in the looks. It's not in the interior quality. It is in the driving experience. And even to this day, the only vehicle that's gotten close to this driving experience, in my opinion, is the Rivian and the Turbo S Porsche Taycan. That is the only two manufacturers that have gotten something that is this fast and this fun to drive. And frankly, with a build quality that, that made sense. The build quality of this, guys, I, I, I wanna make sure I, I make this clear, is much, much better. The panel gaps look great. Like this actually looks like a well-produced, well-built car now. And frankly, they've been working on it for so long, it, it's about time, right? And one little note here, if you wanna charge a car, you go ahead and push that. This then comes up with your ability to go ahead and put in your charge port and all of that. So, you know, it is, it is a, uh, a nice car to live with you know you can get over the doors here and let's go ahead and take it on a point of view drive all right guys we're in the model y performance so again put your foot on the brake it's not going to go anywhere it tells you you have to go ahead and select well not select you have to select the gear so you have to put the key card there Again, I'm not a huge fan of that. I wish it just came with a darn key that automatically sensed I was around the vehicle or in the vehicle, and then we're good to go. You can order a key. I believe they're like a couple hundred bucks, 500 bucks, something like that. I would go ahead and do that if I were you. Okay. So, the heated steering wheel managed to turn itself back on, I guess. No, it did not. It must just be on because of the sun hitting it, but it feels nice and toasty. I will tell you, immediate first impressions... It feels like a sports car, guys. With these 21 inch wheels, with the way the steering feels, there's virtually no give. Now, there is no give because I've got it in steering sport. If you put steering in comfort mode, you have quite a bit of play now, right? It's still right on rails, like it's still gonna basically interact with the steering every split second, but it's a lot lighter. But in sport mode, it is literally like driving my Aston Martin, right? It, it, there is, there is, you go this way, you go that way, the wheels adjust every time. So the most cars, like with the Fords, even the Lightning and stuff, you know, there's like a little bit of a dead zone, right? When you turn it, not on a Tesla. And that really does aid in the fun factor of the vehicle, guys. The seats are also very comfortable. You can adjust the bolster. So from that point of view, I think you're really gonna love the vehicle. Now. Regenerative braking is amazing. You're gonna absolutely love it. Um, I think that it's one of my favorite features of my Teslas. You just never need the brakes on normal driving. Now, if you're gonna be driving, uh, you know, very spirited, for example, I did take my Model S to the track. I took it to, you know, the Corvette Museum, the NCM racetrack, I took it once. I will tell you, that was an experience, uh, feeling the weight of that car and all the batteries. It, definitely surprised me at how crappy the brakes are with that car um, I would say I got rid of a good chunk of my pads on that one track day because you have to keep in mind these are very heavy cars I mean this is a 4700 pound vehicle so you know if you get a hundred kilowatt battery pack in the Model X or the Model S I mean these are very you know 5,000 plus pound cars and they don't really come with brakes that frankly are built to handle the kind of horsepower these cars make. I mean, this car makes 487 foot-pounds of torque and I believe 455 or 450 horsepower, which is a lot. And they give you brakes that aren't really that big. You know, we're not talking like, let's put it this way. If you look at the Porsche Taycan Turbo S brakes, those things are insane. They almost take up the entire, entire wheel diameter of the wheel, right? I mean, there's maybe an inch of gap between the brakes and the actual, I think, 20 or 21 inch wheels that came with that car. So they're just massive, like 440 millimeter or 420 millimeter brakes. So th th that car has over 700 horsepower, so it needs that. 
and it also has regenerative braking and things like that, which this one does not have, which I'm actually uh, appreciative of because I'm not a huge fan of regenerative braking. I would rather have regenerative engine, which this, or not engine, but motors. When you take your foot off the accelerator, and you can probably see it in the screen here, the car does aggressively slow down, especially when it's warmed up. So as far as the overall driving experience, you can hear no rattling. I'm gonna shut up for a second. You hear a little bit of wind noise, but no rattling. They've, they've solved whatever issue was in the last one, which I think it was a trim piece up here. Now, the driving experience is frankly fun. It, it you, know, you have great visibility. Because there's nothing in front of you to distract you, you do focus on the road a bit more. Overall, the performance is right there. I mean, you know that this thing has got the beans because you feel it in the accelerator. If you go ahead and put it in the mode here, which I'm in currently sport mode, you just know that this has got a lot of performance. You feel it in the pedals, right? You tap on that thing ever so slightly and it's all the power in the world. Like, let me give you an example. Like, you're doing 75 miles an hour now. Now I will tell you one thing that they have changed between the Model S and X and the earlier versions is this one does have an audible sound with the motors a little bit more than both of mine have. And it is a little artificial. So they have added or increased the noise that this vehicle makes. Uh, and that's probably for safety. You know, when you put it in reverse now, it makes like a beeping, or not a beeping noise, but it makes an audible sound to tell people, hey, this car is on and reversing. Mine doesn't do that, which I actually prefer. It's very stealthy when you reverse, right? Uh, but overall, noise is not anything gimmicky like like the Mach E, where it has that like synthetic sound, or the Turbo S Taycan, you know, that has that tur that like weird synthesized sound, or the Banshee that I reviewed at SEMA. Like it just sounds fine. Like let me go ahead and slow down, and you can hear what I'm referring to at a very a very slow speeds. You hear it? Like, it sounds like a slight electrical. Like, I'm going to shut up. Just listen to it. And at about 40 miles an hour, you just hear the tires. So, it does have a little bit of an audible noise. But overall, guys, it's quiet in here. You can absolutely take your passengers on a nice long journey. You know, it will drive itself. There's so many things about the driving experience of this Model Y that, frankly, and I got to make sure I say this on camera, is it's just great. Like, I, I really think that it's better than the Kia EV6. I think it's better even than the Rivian. I think it, now the interior quality, no. I would give the interior quality on both of those vehicles to the manufacturers, Kia and, uh, and frankly, the Rivian. They look better. They have better materials, right? Uh, I think it's better value for the money. But you can't knock the Tesla driving experience. This just feels like a legitimate sports car. I mean, it really does. I mean, look at this. I mean, when you, I mean, good Lord, you're doing 85 miles an hour and you're on the gas or excuse me, the accelerator pedal for a split second. It's just incredible how much performance these things have. And it feels so sporty, like right on rails, right? It just feels like you're driving a spaceship and you know they've been working on these these darn cars now since what like they started with the original tesla which was essentially a lotus uh, and then they went to the model s i mean nobody's been putting more research and development into the driving experience of driving an electric car than tesla and i do think that when you get in and you actually drive the car and experience it on the street you're just going to realize that they're, they're better than everybody else when it comes to that feature. Now, interior quality, build quality, honestly, I'd give it to Porsche all day. I'd give it to Kia all day. I'd give it even to Rivian all day. I think they make a better overall vehicle from those points of view. But the self-driving and the driving experience, you, you really have a hard time knocking Tesla. It just feels so good and so much fun to drive. Now, the other thing to consider getting this versus getting a Rivian is this has over 40,000 supercharger networks all over the country. And when you go to like trips, for example, you know, you can see and map out anywhere in the United States and frankly, most countries exactly where you've got to stop. Whereas 
Electrify America, you know, with the Lightnings and the Audis and all that, they tap into those networks. Like, they're just not quite there yet. They're, they're oftentimes feature broken stations. They oftentimes won't connect to the app as much. And, you know, you might need to get an adapter for some of these chargers because the one that you went to wasn't built for XYZ model that you're in. So it's just a little finicky. Whereas when you get a Tesla, you know confidently that there are 40,000 supercharger stations and it just makes the stress of owning an electric car almost gone. I like supercharging. I like, you know, on a, like I'll get two, two and a half, three hours of, of consistent driving at 70, 72 miles an hour, right? It's got 300 miles of range, plenty of miles. You, you leave your house at hundred percent. You get to the charger at 20, 25%, right? You charge up, you, you go to the restroom, you get something to eat, you come back, your, your, char, your car's at 85, 90% after 40 minutes. Like it's, it's not bad, you know? Now, what else to talk about? Let's, uh, let's talk about the autopilot. So here's a little weird thing. If you like, this is a dealer car currently. So there is no profile essentially with this vehicle. So you're not going to be able to turn on full self driving until you've registered the vehicle. And then from my understanding, Tesla will go ahead and essentially transfer full self driving to the driver. Now that doesn't mean you don't have the capability of doing lane keep. So if you hit that paddle twice, you can see here on the screen, it's lane. Now it will not, it will not go ahead and indicate. It will not change lanes. It won't do anything like that. It will literally only do this. Okay. So just keep that in mind. And now if you go to upgrades, it does tell me that I could spend $200 a month plus tax. So basically 220 a month. And I can go ahead and turn on full self, full self driving. However, this one does have the full self driving computer. It was on the VIN. So with my last two model Y and, or excuse me, my model S and model X, I was able to register it and then that full self-driving was unlocked at that point. However, with this, unless they change that, you should be good. And meaning when the new owners take registration of this vehicle, the FSD should transfer to them and they shouldn't have to pay $200 a month. If there's anybody in the comments that wants to confirm that with me, let me know. Now the dealer has told me that full self-driving no longer transfers. And I said, mm, I did some Googling. It's, it does sound like it does transfer still because let's be honest, the value of this vehicle is sold as an FSD vehicle. By, by the way, the car self-driving right now, that's why I don't have my hands on the wheel. So it is sold with that $15,000 premium, which is why the vehicle sold for $70,000. And let me just say this, guys, if you're looking for a car that's going to hold its value, Tesla is not necessarily going to be the, the number one in the marketplace anymore. Um, this car was $87,000 new with taxes and or not with taxes, but with delivery fees. So taxes is an additional 7% on that, at least here in Tennessee. This vehicle was wholesaled at $62,000 and retailed at 70. So uh, actually, no, it wasn't even that. Good. I think it was wholesaled at 64,000 and retailed at 70. So you know, not great. We're talking about what a $20,000 hit in a matter of three months. So, you know, these aren't going to be necessarily the resale Kings. And the reason is they just increased the value of the vehicle so much with all this inflation and all this crap that they've become 1% cars. I mean, the reality is if you go to Tesla today and you buy this vehicle, you're going to have a $1,400 a month car payment with no money down. $1,400 a month, and that's with a 72 month note. Now, forget about the gas savings, you know, forget about all that other crap they try to sell you on. At the end of the day, that's your cost, right? Yeah, you might save 100 bucks a month on fuel savings if you don't drive that much, or if you drive a lot, maybe you'll save a few bucks more than that, but you still have to pay for supercharging. And let me be honest, supercharging does cost some money. You know, it's not free. Now, here's an interesting note. So we're in December right now. And Tesla is currently offering a $3,700 credit, so a reduction in price, and 10,000 free supercharger miles if you take delivery of a Tesla Model Y before the end of this year, which means you essentially have just a couple of weeks. So what that tells me is people are starting to back out of their orders, and um, that, that essentially has allowed them to have some inventory to then resell at a lower price, which I think is very interesting. We will see 
what happens with their Q4 deliveries. I'm sure they're going to look really good. However, I have a feeling Q1 and Q2 of next year are going to look pretty darn bearish. And that is what Tesla stock is currently pricing in right now. Tesla stock is down over 60% year to date. I actually bought 10 shares last night on the gap fill. So I am, I've got about $12,400 in Tesla currently, and I'm going to go ahead and just keep accumulating it until it is probably my largest position again. Mostly because I just think the company is still got a very, very long track record ahead of them of having a lot of success. They've got the, the truck, right? The Cybertruck, they've got the semi, they've got a $25,000, $30,000 car they're, they're working on building, they've got the Roadster, and they've got solar still to build out. So they've got a lot of tailwinds, I think, that are gonna carry the company onto a lot of success. But I do think that Tesla is probably going to hit about 130 to 120, somewhere in there as a bottoming point. Should touch about what they call the 100 EMA or the 100 exponential monthly moving average. I'll go ahead and put a little uh, image of that here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is exactly where it bounced the last bear market, by the way, uh, for Tesla. So that's probably where you, know, you may want to buy some shares or keep adding if you already have shares like a lot of me and my friends do. Overall, though, I do think that the product is solid. I, I'll be honest with you, I think it's a little bit overpriced now. I'm, I just got to be honest with you. I, I, I think that this vehicle is worth 70000 I don't think it's worth 87000 with FSD. I don't think full self-driving is worth fifteen grand. There is no way I would pay $15,000 for FSD. You can't use the uh, quote app to put your car on what will make money for you during the day so that's 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 a complete scam that they've been trying to sell us on for a couple of years right that you'll be able to use the tesla taxi service that's ridiculous this car does not full self-drive and if you do put it on full self-driving beta and you you get approved and all that i will tell you guys you're gonna have to intervene quite a bit it's just the way it works so don't think that if you spend 15 grand that in six months you're actually going to you know be able to make money with your tesla and driving other people around that's that's potentially years away so if i was going to buy this vehicle i would absolutely buy the, the the performance it's just fun to have the power i love the way it looks with the wheels and the red brake calipers i love the sportiness of it I like that it's a little bit tighter suspension so i would get the performance but i would not get the $15,000 full self-driving. If they brought it back down to $8,000 or even $5,000, I would go ahead and do it. Look at comparable specs on a Ford Lightning that has Blue Cruise, or you look at the Kia EV6 that has its technology. It comes either standard or it's only a few thousand dollars. So this is another reason why I think Tesla is just going to have their lunch eaten. You know, there, there's other real competitors now in the market from Audi, from Porsche, from Kia, from Hyundai, right? From BMW, from Ford, from Rivian. I mean, there's a lot of companies now that if you want an EV car, and let's be honest, you, you probably should get an EV car now, especially with gas prices where they're at. Yeah, they've come down 30, 40% since where they were, but in the end of the day, EVs are, are so practical, They're, they do feel like the future. I do think a lot of internal combustion engines are gonna be worth probably next to nothing in the next 10 years. I do expect regulations to continue to get worse and worse and you know carbon taxes to get worse and worse. And at the end of the day, guys, like this is probably where you wanna put your money as a safer value bet uh, versus an internal combustion engine. I could be wrong about that, Maybe it'll even go in the opposite direction. Who really knows? Uh, but that's just my gut check on the industry. And that's one of the things Elon said a couple months ago, right? Issues with owning Teslas. I will tell you that, you know, if you have an accident, you're going to have, uh, like I've had my Model X now in the shop for the better part of uh, seven weeks, eight weeks. No, actually, we started the process uh, about 12 weeks ago. It's been in the shop now for about six weeks. Now, this is not even at Tesla, mind you. This is literally just with a third party, which is ECR, European Collision Repair. Tesla does not do body shop repair. They can only get you the parts, and then an approved body shop has to then do the work. So there's only two approved body shops here in Nashville, which is Beeman Automotive Group and ECR. So. It is what it is, guys. Like I can tell you that it's been kind of a painful process because you you know we're without a six-figure vehicle now for a 
a long time and that's like our everyday vehicle that we take our kids around in and that I drive more often than not. So a little frustrating with that and I wanted to make sure that I said that on camera. So just keep in mind there's still some just tricky things with owning a Tesla that is specific to a Tesla like that. You know, if you have an accident, you're going to have to expect long times to fix it. Now, I will say there's supply chain issues at Ford. There's supply chain issues at Kia. So you're probably also going to have longer wait times. But in the end of the day, you can actually take it to these manufacturers and they can fix it. You don't always have to just go to an approved body shop. Although a lot of them do still outsource to an approved body shop. So in the end of the day, it could be very similar. But I will tell you, Tesla getting the parts for ECR seemed like it took a little longer than it needed to. I think it was like a good seven, eight weeks for them to get every single part they needed. And then I started the process of actually dropping the car off, the tear down, the respray, ins installation, assembly, all that stuff, right? Um, so I wanted to say that. Overall value, you know, again, I still think that this vehicle with FSD should be 70 grand. It feels like a 70 grand vehicle. It drives like a, a vehicle at 70 grand. It still feels just premium enough with the materials, the performance, the looks to justify the price. Would I spend $87,000 with delivery fees? Absolutely not. Um, would I spend 69,000 without FSD? No, I wouldn't. I would go to the used market and I would save money. This car just sold for $70,000 with FSD. And let's be honest, that is kind of a, the perfect sweet spot. So I would go ahead and look in the used market. The car market right now has been absolutely obliterated by the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. You can get a good deal on a Tesla Model Y. So you probably can find one of these without FSD somewhere in the 50s now with low miles and a, and a nice spec like this. The white on white is a, a popular spec, right? I would encourage you to get white on black. I will tell you. I've got white seats in my Model S, and if you wear blue jeans a lot, I'm a big fan of jeans. I'm a Nashville guy, I wear jeans like 99% of the time, right? I wear a lot of blue jeans, especially darker blue jeans. At the end of the day, they are going to stain your seats. So be mindful of that. I have to clean my leather almost every month if I wanna keep my seats still looking white. And some of that blue does not come off. So just keep that in mind. Driving this in winter time, I will tell you, is you do experience a little bit of range and battery loss. Now this is the best of all the electric manufacturers, so you aren't gonna see that much of a decrease being outside, but if you charge your car to 82%, you leave it outside, and let's say it gets down to like 25, 30 degrees, you're probably gonna lose 2% of your overall battery range. I've seen it be even worse than that if it's really cold. Like tonight, I think uh, it's gonna be like something like 13 degrees tonight. So it's going to probably drain the battery four to 5% if you keep it outside. That can be an issue, trust me. Now this one also has the new battery cells, the 4680s, and it also has the new heat pump. So the heat works amazing in this car and it doesn't basically kill as much as my electric heat did in the, in the Model S. So you're gonna get a little bit better battery range with with running the heat in this car than the older versions so it's i'm thankful that they improved that and you can see we've been driving around here i left the house at 82 or 89 percent i mean we've been put what 20 30 miles here we're at 78 percent i've been flooring it for you guys so really these get really good range you can get 300 miles all day if you're babying it and if you're not babying it you can still probably get a good 220 um, you know, if you're just you know, having fun and being a hula. Well, guys, this is my conclusion. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content on the Tesla Model Y performance. Let me sum it up for you. I think that this is a great vehicle. I really do. I like the way it looks. I like the interior build quality. that They've improved it. I think that a lot of the driving features and the performance and just the overall sensation of driving a Tesla is some of the world's best when it comes to EVs. However, the price the interior quality as far as the looks and the feeling and the trim and everything. I tell you what, I think if you drove the Model Y and then you went and you drove a Mach-E or you drove a Kia EV6 or a Rivian especially, or a Porsche Taycan, which especially in the used market, they've come down a lot. You can almost get one for 85,000 now. If 
it's it's starting to make sense to go that direction right because those also drive pretty good and they're less money and in a lot of ways they kind of beaten them at their own game right especially the uh, kia ev6 which is really good for sixty thousand bucks um, now if tesla drops the price of this back to where it was back in the day where it was you know in the mid 50s mid to high 50s then i think you go back and you buy this so if i were you and you wanted to buy one of these i'd go in the used market and i'd go ahead and scoop one of these up for about 45 000 to 55,000, somewhere in there with maybe 20,000 miles on it i think that's a great bet um, would I go ahead and order one of these brand new from Tesla, even though they're offering a $3,700 credit and 10,000 free supercharger miles? I wouldn't. I just think it's a little too much money, guys, especially for $1,400 a month with FSD. That is just crazy. So I hope you found my content helpful. Um, always appreciate you guys watching, subscribe, or share this with any friends you think might enjoy the content. And we really do appreciate you having you uh, and your attention for this time. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later.